All right. So I added some steps to to my GitHub Actions CI configuration, and um, we'll be going through that. So uh, previously, I was able to deploy to apply my deployment uh, config to Amazon EKS and uh, it, it all was able to deploy successfully. So um, rather than build the image manually, uh, then push it, then apply my deployments and run the tests manually, I added those steps now to um, uh, to, to, to my CI configuration. And as I talk now, if, if I push any changes, uh, it's all built and deployed automatically. So uh, let's go through. So I changed this to name it to, to deploy. So this uh, is a deploy. And then, um, of course, I'm, I'm using the Ubuntu image. But then on the actual steps, uh, so number one, we check out the code. And then we we set up Python and then install dependencies. So this, I had all this previously. So what I added was this um, installing kubectl. Uh, so this is what I added. And I learned that there is, there are, are some some tools on the marketplace that one can use. So for um, what I'm showing here is, uh, um, is a pipeline that has run successfully. You see every job checks out pretty well. Uh, now, um, so on this step of install kubectl, uh, since we use kubectl, just like the way one would have installed it on their machine. This is what we are installing on um, on this uh, image uh, so that we can uh, be able to do everything we need to do. Uh, so, um, um, so we have a marketplace here. So for example, if I want to install kubectl, um, I can come here and say kubectl, and uh, this gives me um, a number of options, but the one I used here was this kubectl tool installer. So if I click here, you see that, you know, it gives me some config to work with, so um, uh, that's basically what I used, uh, this, and then um, I checked the latest version of kubectl and it was this, so I made sure I used that. Uh, then, um, after installing kubectl, uh, we want to configure AWS credentials. So these credentials, I already have them locally, and um, uh, these would be gotten from, um, from the user section on AWS. Uh, on, on on secrets uh, and I already have them locally so I just basically uh, picked my config from um, it's under home then dot AWS under config I picked my um, configuration and added it so uh, also there is a tool or uh, if if um, if you want to see how I came up with this on the marketplace, uh, there is also, you can search AWS um, credential, credential. So there is configure AWS credentials um, so that, all right. Um, so you can see uh, allows you to, you know, to to provide the access key ID and then the AWS secret access key, and then the region. So, uh, for me, 
all I had to provide was this, so I left this out really, wasn't necessary in my case. So um, I provided the region, which is US East 1, and then uh, provided these as well. So secrets uh, dot AWS access key ID. Now, are uh, instead of pasting the actual um, access key here, uh, that would be unsafe because that means that uh, one can easily see it in your source code. So there is a place uh, and um, all right. So if I go to my project, boom. Uh, if I go down here. Um, under uh, settings and then under secrets uh, this is where we add our secret so as we can see I was just able to create um, a key and the value and uh, you know these are the these are the ones so our uh, when I'm uh, when I say secrets dot that uh, it will uh, be gotten from uh, my uh, configuration yeah perfect um, all right yeah so that's it on that also after setting up AWS credentials um, then now we want to log into Amazon ECR um, so this is the um, the repository the container registry uh, for uh, our images. So um, there is also a tool that allows us to do that. If I say ECR, um, Amazon ECR login action. So uh, that should uh, give us some um, way to do that. So I um, used that here. So this allows us to be able to log in to Amazon ECR. Now, once we have logged in, we want to build and push our image. Okay. All right. So uh, pushing an image to Amazon ECR, there is also a job for that. Um, sorry, a tool for that. And it's also here. So all we need is to know the ECR registry and then the repository and then the image tag and then we, we run the command. So basically uh, that's what we did here. And uh, so you can see that, uh, you know, um, how we are getting our registry, we are getting it from ECR, uh, login ECR, which is this you know dot outputs dot registry uh, so uh, this the moment we connect to our Amazon ECR uh, it will now have the 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 the, um, the URL to the to the registry and the EC and the, the repository we get it from um, it's already configured on AWS so if I'm to log in and show you that, uh, good. So, uh, okay, I guess it's that. Uh, perfect. So, um, if I go to ECR and boom, uh, so this would be our registry, uh, the URI to the registry, then this would be the repository name, this one here. So uh, that's what we are putting here. And then the image tag, uh, this would be gotten from our, our GitHub. So basically, our, this would be like a key for uh, a unique hash for 
our um, commit so that will be added to the tag to the to the image as a tag to make it unique uh, all right so so we run the docker build uh, so remember we have to build our image uh, so we run the docker build and uh, um, that is how we do this uh, but notice that we are putting we are using the latest as our tag because I basically wanted uh, all the images I pushed to have this um, latest tag so sorry is going to be replacing the latest image such that um, since that's what we are deploying our uh, this make sure that what we have deployed as the latest is what we have pushed at the latest is uh, what gets deployed yeah and then we now push this tag this minus a means uh, we will push all tagged our uh, images uh, to the repository yeah all right so that's it um, all right looks good up to that point so update cube config are so you know for us to be able to um are uh, to use our cube ctl to connect to our uh, eks cluster uh, we use the the cube config uh, which basically like on my local machine i would really get it from uh i'm in home so if i say cd dot cube sorry so there is this uh config so our uh, you know we need this so for example our uh, this kind of configuration allows our uh, allows our uh, allows kubectl to be able to know the context it is working in uh, so for example previously i made a video where i talked about if i have minikube locally and then i also want to connect to my eks cluster i would actually use this configuration in uh, cube config to actually change the context so uh, in my in my uh, case this i would really set the context to this and then that would allow me to be able to connect to um, eks cluster so uh, we need to you know update that config and set the cluster name and then the region and then kubectl will be able to um, uh, to work within the context of, of of eks cluster yeah so it means every command we execute uh, will be um, uh, will be directed to our eks cluster yeah perfect so once all that is set now we are ready to deploy to eks so all we do now is um, <clears throat> we now apply our deployments and uh, our configuration files basically so uh, these are the files we are applying uh, the same way we really applied them manually on the you know on the console on the terminal is the same way we really do it here so uh, uh, we apply that we apply that and we apply that and this can only work once we have done this because at this point we have the right context yeah all right then um, my last step here is uh, to run the tests uh, so I wanted to be able to to run the tests now running the tests since now our application runs within a container which is basically wrapped by a pod are uh, for us to enter that container and and run the tests we have to use kubectl exec command and then we 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 enter uh, we enter our container or pod and then we run the command so i was able to get that is uh if i say kubectl get pod are uh, 
So basically, this is the pod I'm interested in uh, because uh, it's the one that has the application. Yeah. So, uh, of course, once I reapply the deployments, especially if I create new deployments, there are chances the pods, this pod can change and, uh, you know, the, the name can change. And uh, like now, for example, we have this pod. So if the, it's now this pod that is running. Ah, so we have one pod here, but we could have a cluster and each pod would have a different name. Uh, but for now, I just used this because I didn't uh, get a way to uh, a kind of query the running pod dynamically. Yeah, so I just took it manually and put it there and then the tests run well. So I'll just make a small change uh, so that we can run the, this thing again. Uh, let me remove this comment. So I would just say um, git commit oh sorry move to comment so our uh, this is supposed to run on every branch once we push to any branch so i expect this to run i doing this so that we can see how the pipeline runs and um and yeah um, but eventually, I will want this to this kind of deployment only happen um, on the develop branch and on the master branch. Yeah, so uh, that is something I'll try and do later on. So if I commit this and then push, um, boom. So if now I go to boom, ah. Just want to see the pipeline running before um, it finishes. Uh, so I will just come to actions. So we see the pipeline is running. Um, so it's on installing dependencies. So all that is happening. So as you can see, we didn't make any changes to the deployments. Yeah, so our, this has run successfully. So if I come here, I can really see that uh, my, um, my pipeline ran successfully. All right, so that's it. Uh, catch you in the next one. Thank you.